who Jesus is. Well, y'all know I love telling stories, especially about when Pastor Reese and I met. Uh, and uh, just it was, it's been 28 years or so since we met. Uh, and, and, uh, when, when I was a teenager, at that time in my life, I, I loved, it'll be harder to heal. Uh, but I used to love messing with horses, and uh, a friend of mine, uh, he, we went in together on this colt. We said, you know what, we'll buy this young colt, and we'll, we'll split it, and I'll break it, and we'll, we'll train it, and I'll make some, we'll both make some money, and and because uh, I didn't have any money, so I was trying to. So everything that I had, uh, we threw into this colt that we bought. And then I come to Florida, and I meet this young lady named Sharissa, and and uh, all of a sudden, it's her senior prom, and I didn't have any money, cash. It was all tied up in this colt, uh, and I wanted to fly to Florida to, uh, to take her to her senior prom. So I called my buddy. I said, his name's RJ. I said, RJ, we got to sell the colt. He's like, well, you not even broke the colt yet. I said, I know, but I can sell it tomorrow. We can get all our money back. We won't lose a dime because uh, I got to go to Florida and see Sharissa. So he said, okay, if you need to sell the colt, go ahead. So we sold the and I never bought another colt because she also gets all the money. No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but, but she didn't just become part of my life. She became all of my life. She didn't just get part of my heart. She got all of my heart. And when something or someone has all of your heart, then your ambitions change, your attention changes, and your actions change. Once she had my heart, my attention shifted. My ambition shifted. I didn't care about making money on a colt. I didn't care about making enough to buy another one and doing it all over. All I cared about was being with her. Everything shifted. My actions changed. And friends, when it comes to Jesus, he is trying to get our attention. And when it comes to Jesus, we need to let him have so much of our attention that he has all of us, that it shifts our ambition, that it shifts everything about our life and it changes our actions. Jesus wants your attention so much that he is supreme of your life, that he is Lord of your life. When something or someone is Lord over your life, then they have it all. They sit on the throne of your heart. And Jesus desires to be supreme in your heart and in your life. And when he is supreme, some things will happen. When he is Lord in our life, some things begin to take place. And I want to cover some of those today. When Jesus is supreme, when he has your attention, when he is your Lord, number one, you will seek differently than the world seeks. Colossians chapter three and verse number one says this. If you were raised with Christ, in other words, received Jesus, been saved through faith in Christ Jesus, then seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So when we have been raised with Jesus and this, this, um, uh, was, this idea was first shared with us through Paul in Colossians chapter two, where he said, buried with baptism and raised with Jesus. When we have been raised with Christ, we've come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is. Then he catches our eye and our heart shifts. He becomes our Lord and certain behaviors now begin to change in our life. And we begin to be people who seek differently than the world seeks. When Pastor Reese caught my eye, I didn't care what I had in the horse barn anymore because I began to seek not another colt, but I began to seek her. And when Jesus has our attention, we began to seek after who Jesus is at the right hand of God. And that is opposite of what the world says to seek. That is so different than what the world portrays that we need to be seeking after. But when Jesus is Lord and when Jesus has our attention, we should be people who seek after what is in heaven. You see, because 2 Peter 1 tells us that we come part, become partakers of, of a divine nature. So we should be seeking what that divine nature is looking for. And 
understand what we seek will determine who we are. What we seek will determine who we are. And when we have been raised with Christ and we begin making the choice to seek things above, then it begins to shift who we are. When we understand what the Bible says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to us, his righteousness that we are to seek, then it shifts everything for us. And my concern is that there are too many who are seeking second, seeking third, seeking fourth at best the kingdom of God the things that are above Jesus should captivate our ambitions Jesus should captivate us in what we seek after in our life understand something that Satan does not care what you seek on earth he only cares what you're seeking above Because when we seek Jesus, when we seek heavenly things, when we seek what is above, everything shifts in our natural world and we become people who are seeking after Jesus. Our focus shifts, our purpose shifts, and what we are about changes. We become people who begin walking differently. We become people who begin talking differently. We become people who begin acting different, raising our families different, speeding our, speaking our, or excuse me, treating our spouses different. When we seek Jesus and the things above, everything shift. And when Jesus has our attention, when he is our Lord, then we will seek differently than the world. When he has our attention, when he is our Lord, number two, we will set our minds on different things. Uh, The next verse in chapter three of Colossians says this, uh, set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. Uh, So when Jesus is our Lord, we seek differently than the world and we have a set of mind, a mindset that is different than the world that is on uh, things that are above. And many believers, I think we could even go as far at times to say most believers need a mind shift in their life. And here's the deal. You will never seek what doesn't have your attention and you will never have a mindset on what you're not seeking. May Jesus get the attention of your life. And here's the issue. Many have allowed everything else to get our attention and it puts our mindset in a different place. They've allowed sin to get their attention. We know this because there's more sin in people's lives oftentimes than there is Jesus. Maybe I'll let let that just sit there a minute and you can take it home and chew on it. Many have allowed demons and the demonic activity to get their attention more than they have Jesus because they focus more on the demonic realm than they do the heavenly realm. Many have allowed pandemics to get their attention more than anything else. If we didn't know it, the pandemic is over. Put that wherever you want to. But we know that they've got, they've allowed that to have their attention because even still today, it's used as an excuse to say, I can go to the restaurant, I can go to Walmart, I can go to the airport, I can go wherever, but I can't come to church because it's too dangerous. Because they need a mind shift because COVID has become what they focused on and they've forgotten the world is moving on. The mind shift. When we're seeking Jesus, our mind shifts and changes. And it becomes what, 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 you, what you are, has your attention, what you're seeking becomes uh, what, you, what you just uh, focus upon in your life, uh, what you're consumed with. Many have allowed politics to get their attention. Unless it's a Trump church, I won't go. Unless it's an affirming church, I won't go. What happened to it just being about if it's a Bible church and letting the Bible determine everything else? Stop letting your politics determine your Christianity and start letting the Bible determine your politics. There are some so-called preachers who had the audacity to put signs in front of their churches during COVID that said, if you don't wear a mask, then don't come here. My God, what heresy is that? People with masks have souls. Quit letting those kinds of things drive 
Where you are in your walk with Jesus, get your mind set on the right things. It isn't politics. It isn't Democrat, Republican. All. Listen, I'll preach a different message about politics later if you want and show you in the Bible all sorts of stuff there. But end of the day, get your mind set on Jesus. Let him be what you seek and let the things above be where your mind is. Then we will find ourselves in the place that the Lord's designed us to be. I know, I just made some of you mad, but that's okay. You'll like me again by the time the service is over, I hope. Listen, the only way to really seek the things that are above, heavenly things, is to allow your mind to be set on the things that are above. If Jesus is our Lord, if we have been raised to Christ, then we seek different things than the world and we have a mindset that is different than the world. If I'm going to watch news, I watch Fox News, but Fox News does not drive my mind. Well, some of you just said, I thought you were going to talk about politics another time, but Number three, if Jesus is Lord, if he is your supreme, if he has your attention, then you will slay what the world nurtures. You will seek, you will set, and you will slay what the world nurtures. Here's what the Bible continues to say in Colossians chapter three. We'll read verse three through verse nine. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your mouth do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds the apostle Paul said in verse 5 put to death your members which are on the earth this is a death of deeds this death of deeds that should not be part of our life as believers uh, when we seek after Jesus because he has our attention we have a mindset of things above then we understand it is our job to begin to slay some things that the world says you should nurture Adrian Rogers says the Jesus who captivates my ambitions and dominates my attention is the Jesus who regulates my actions that's worth saying one more time. The Jesus who captivates my ambitions and dominates my attention is the Jesus who regulates my actions. Here's the thing. People always struggle putting to death what they do not hate. And the very things listed in verse 5 are things we are to put to death are the same things the world has elevated and have made normal and have caused people to nurture instead of slay. And if it's thought to be acceptable, why would we slay it? We need to get the knife out and start slaying some of the things of our own life But the apostle Paul said, put them to death. What I find interesting about this in Colossians 3, I don't know if y'all thought you were going to get a different message or what, but anyway, kind of baited you. Said, you ever wanted to thrive? Come on. Well, we're learning how to thrive. We're going to get there in a minute. What I find interesting about all these things points and these things is that Paul never indicates that it's someone else's responsibility to do them. You're to be the one that seeks. You determine what you seek in your life. You make the conscious decision of what it is you are seeking after. You make the conscious decision of what it is your mind is fixed up on. And you make the conscious decision of what it is you desire, you desire to slay indeed that isn't pleasing to the Lord. It is in your own purview or your own choice. 
This putting to death implies a decision made to abruptly change and forcibly slay those things that are not pleasing to God. But I go back to the statement I made a few minutes ago. Why would you slay anything you do not hate? You don't. We need to learn to hate what God hates. We need to learn to remove ourselves from what we're from what God removed from himself, which is sin. I know we're saved through Jesus. It's not a works-based type of method. Jesus saves us, and it's only through, it's only through Jesus and his blood. But listen, those of us who know Jesus Christ, we are to put on a different life and have a different idea of what we seek, have a different mindset of what we're after, and be willing to slay what the world says, give a bottle. The problem is, we've let the things we need to slay grow and mature so much, they're not on a bottle anymore. If we'd have killed it then, it would have been easier to get rid of. But now it's done grown and matured in your life and weaved into everything you do, and it becomes harder to slay what the world wants you to nurture. We protect what we love and we slay what we hate. And as believers, we should be slaying the deeds that the world nurtures. When Jesus is Lord, we will hate what he hates and we will love what he loves. When he has our attention, we will seek differently, we will have a mindset that is differently, and we will slay what the world says nurture. And then lastly, when Jesus is Lord and he has our attention and we begin to seek, set, and slay, it moves us from a life of only surviving and struggling to survive, quite frankly, to a life that will know how to thrive in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3, 10 through 17. We'll read the rest of these verses. It says this. Have, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against you, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love which is the bond of perfection and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the Lord and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him doesn't that sound like a life of thriving uh, I find it so interesting that the apostle Paul deals uh, with the seeking the setting and the slaying before he deals uh, with the putting on of the deeds of who Jesus is because we can't carry the character of God if we're still trying to carry the character of sin so seek set and slay so we can put on who Jesus is and carry the characters of God and thrive Here's the deal. Jesus doesn't save us and tell us to, that the old is gone to leave us exposed. Because the exposed rarely can survive and they're continually struggling. You go out in the wilderness and you go out with your body exposed, then you're going to struggle to survive. Jesus doesn't get rid of the old and leave us exposed, but he gets rid of the old and he says, now put on these new things that are the tools that will help you thrive in your life. Put to death, discard the old and put on this new because the new man is a thriving man. The new man is a renewable man. Read it, we read it. The new man is a renewable man in the knowledge of God. Our knowledge of God increases. We become people who seek, who set, and who slay. Verse 10 tells us that this new man is according to the image of him who created him. And God always thrives, baby. He's never struggling. And when we are in his image in this new man, then we are people who are set to thrive if we will seek, set, and slay. And I'm telling you, we'll be people who will thrive.
in Christ. This new man we put on is able to identify. Listen to this. We read it. Not as Greek, not as Jew, not as circumcised or uncircumcised, but identifies as Christ. And we become then the elect of God that it said who is holy. Ooh, hallelujah. What a thriving life. We are able to put on and carry rightly these attributes of God. But if Jesus is not our Lord, if Jesus is not supreme, if Jesus doesn't have our attention fully, if Jesus doesn't hold our heart, we will never thrive because we will never be willing to slay and we'll never have a mindset to to seek after one who doesn't have our attention. Today, I believe that Jesus is trying to get some people's attention. See, here's the deal. A lot of times we become people who are fine with the seeking and the mindset shift, but when it comes to the slaying, we're not willing to do that. But we got to follow through with all these things move into the place that God wants us to move in and then you can move from a place of struggle to a place of thriving in Jesus and listen this place of thriving does not mean oh man that you're preaching a message that all my problems are gone no way you're preaching a message where oh man all you know uh, everything's gonna be fine no not at all I'm preaching a message when we seek, set, and slay, and we put on the things of God, that when those things around us begin to happen and and, and things begin to press against us, we are not crushed. We have a peace that goes beyond understanding. We have an ability to survive and thrive in an environment when everyone else is struggling because we have put on who Jesus is and we have sought, we have changed our mindset, and we have slayed what needs to go and we've become the elect of God putting on the attributes of him so have you been seeking just not heavenly things have you had a mindset it's just not on things above have you been unwilling to pick up the sword and slay some things in your life and you're wondering why you've not been able to thrive, then then I believe the scripture has given us the instructions today as what we need to do. Maybe your marriage is in trouble. In terms of your marriage, you need to be seeking what is above. You need to have a mindset according to scripture. You need to slay the things in, in the habits in the marriage, the deeds in the marriage that aren't pleasing to the Lord. You need to slay the hateful attitude and the hateful speech. You need to slay the not talking to your wife in love. You need to slay the excuses you give yourself to treat another person like they go into tears. Come on. Slay those things. So your marriage can be one that thrives. This applies to every aspect of our life. The enemy wants you to struggle, but God's called us to thrive in the things of the Lord. But you got to seek, you got to set, you got to slay. Then you'll find yourself thriving. But you'll never, ever, ever do it if Jesus doesn't have your attention. Let him shake you today and wake you up and get your attention so everything will shift some of you need to sell the cult whatever it is in your life get rid of it whatever's got your attention whatever it is get rid of it and let Jesus have all your attention 